Ladies and gentlemen, we've got new streamer software, okay? Today, we are breaking down the Atom streamer suite for you guys to have better quality for your audiences. You're welcome in advance, okay? I'm just joking. I'm excited to go over this with you guys because it's a really great package. I really think you guys are going to enjoy what it has to offer. I've been playing around with it for the last like three or four hours or so. And I just was like, fuck, I need to make a video. Like I need to make a video. Like I need to cover this because it's a great tool. So let's hop right into it. I want to go over everything. I'm going to kind of blitz around every single part of the software so that you guys are well informed and I can, you know, put the word out there. We got great software now. This is awesome. This is very cool. So let's hop into Atom Streamer Suite. I'm gonna have to get used to saying that, but let's hop in there. I'll show you guys what's going on. See if I can show this. I, I did it last time. I killed it last time, actually. Yeah, that's a fucking cook. Okay. All right, guys, this is Atom Stream Suite. It's a brand new software drop by Atom. We've done videos on them in the past. They did the Atom Multi-Stream plugin as well as the Atom Vertical plugin back probably about a year, year and a half ago. But we're gonna cover it. I'm gonna show you guys everything that there is to know to the best of my ability. I've only been playing around with it for about three or four hours so bear with me call me an idiot in the comments if you want but it doesn't matter to me i want to put y'all on game take that as you will so guys as you can see around me we've got a lot of different tools things add-ons additions cool shit we'll start from left to right you got the vertical plugin over here uh this is gonna be your vertical canvas for everything that you do in the vertical format whether that is uh youtube vertical TikTok live, things like that. This is your sort of area to have your stream look however you want it to. As far as I can tell, this is one of my only gripes with these, with these stupid, these stupid fucking vertical plugins is that you don't have the ability to add sources like you do with regular OBS. This doesn't exist. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to go over here, right click, hit add, and then you can add all of your existing scenes or not scenes, sources to the software. I don't like this. I think it's stupid. I think it's dumb as fuck. Yeah, just not a fan. But that is where you're going to control a lot of your vertical stuff. Yeah, like I said, I don't I don't like this right click add nonsense. I, why can't you just add another box? That doesn't make sense to me. But to each their own. This is where you're going to add all of your vertical stuff. You're going to have every single option that you would in the sources tab. It's just not its own conventional box. Below it, you're going to have your scenes for vertical. You can also link these so they correspond with your horizontal scenes, which is really nice. I don't have a practical use case for it yet just because I don't use a lot of different scenes on my stream. But for those that do, it's great. That's awesome. I think it's really cool. Down below it, you're going to have live scenes. I haven't figured out what you would do with this yet. Um, it's kind of just a box that comes with it. Um, I'm sure there's a practical use case for it. I just haven't found it up here. You're going to have where my face is. Actually, you're going to have your horizontal, your horizontal canvas. This is where you're going to do all of your, your normal 1920 by 1080 sort of horizontal stuff. You have your scenes and your scene sources below that. Those are going to be right here. You're going to have your audio mixer there. This is one of the meat and potatoes of the whole thing. This is your output package. This is going to allow you to multi-stream both horizontal and vertical from one area. Uh, right now I have it set up for YouTube vertical, Twitch horizontal, YouTube horizontal, and kick horizontal. Uh, I, I like to organize. I like to name things. I'm, I'm kind of articulate in that way, but this is a really awesome tab. When you first download the software, this is going to be empty. You're going to have to sign into all of your individual platforms to make it shake. And once you do, they're all there. And then you just hit this button down here. That's the go live button. It'll pop for all four platforms and you're good to go. Over here, you have your multi-chat, which is a great embedded feature. I love this. The only thing that I want to complain about, because that's all we do is complain, is, is you can't have multi-chat embedded in OBS without a third-party software. Nutty, shout out Nutty. He's one of the best when it comes to this stuff. Uh, he has a really awesome tool that he utilizes StreamerBot for. If you guys want to watch that video, I'll drop it in the description down below. But that is pretty much the best and most practical way to have embedded chats on stream. But this is a great feature. It's going to show you your live viewer counts up top. Then you have your chats down below. You can also send and receive messages from this area, which is great. Your activity feed over here. This is going to be everything that happens. So your YouTube subscriptions, your follows, your subs, your bits, everything comes through as far as I'm aware. Down below it, you're going to have your stream info. I also really love this feature. This is this is awesome. You, you've seen this before, but I don't think you've seen it like this. They have two different tabs, one for all which is you can apply one title and one set of tags for every single platform. And you can also change your categories individually from here. And then you can do individual platforms. So you can have a different Twitch title, different YouTube title, different kick title, so on and so forth. You can also edit the tags and modify them to your liking 
without having them all be sort of bound together, which is great. It's awesome. That's everything for the live tab. This is what you're going to see when you're live and streaming. I think it's great. I think it's really cool. It looks nice. It doesn't seem to be too bloaty as long as you know what is what and where it is. Okay, guys, this is your, your build tab. This is sort of kind of like the editor's view of this software kind of looks the same for me i don't need them to look any different if you do you have plenty of options for different docs and uh property values live scenes scene notes chat activity stream info the whole nine that you can access all of that in the build tab i just don't need to for me i want it to look more simplified as like a regular obs look you can also add individual canvases so that you can record full-fledged gameplay in full-fledged camera at the same time and have them output equally which is huge i think that is something that a lot of people don't really utilize enough and then we have these tiktoks where your camera Camera looks like it's fucking filmed in a toaster and your gameplay looks great why not have the best of both worlds record both my next quest however is i want to replay buffer both full full cam and gameplay at the same time as separate sources once i'm able to do that which i'm sure i can already i just haven't done the research it's gonna be really cool but yes this is your build tab this is gonna have everything you need in terms of like editing and modifying and going over what you want to do how you want it to look and whatnot so pretty self-explanatory here you know you just set your audio sources and everything the live the live tab is definitely more favorable than the build tab but again it's all for your use case what you're using it for how you want to use it so on and so forth so we're gonna go into settings really quick if you guys need them i know a couple of the homies specifically asked me to do recording settings and streaming settings so i'm doing it for you guys shout out to y'all streaming settings this is what i'm currently running on my 5900x 3080 pc i've got 32 gigs of ram i i take care of my pc you know this is just kind of how I've configured it with the hardware I have. A, a GPU upgrade is definitely in the horizon. I'm just trying to wait to shed tears because the economy sucks and life is hard. All right, so I'm going to, you guys are going to see me over here for a little bit just because I'm going to show you guys these settings effectively. Uh, output settings, guys. These are going to be your streaming settings. The rate control is going to be constant. Bit rate, the bit rate will be 6,000 if you're streaming to Twitch, YouTube, Kick. I think that's a good middle ground. YouTube, you can go higher. And I'm pretty sure you can have individual encoding settings for separate platforms so if you wanted to go higher res on youtube you were more than welcome to do so again this is just kind of like the the blanket setting for great quality and not a lot of intensive performance issues so 6000 bit rate key interval 2 preset p4 medium tuning low latency multi-mode is going to be single pass the profile main adaptive quantization is going to be on and your b frames are going to be set to two now if you have a video encoder that is an nvidia graphics card you're going to want to use h.264 h.265 and av1 are just not stable for streaming platforms unfortunately just yet i'm sure we'll see that in the next two to three years but yeah that's what i'm rocking right now no custom encoder options i don't really use those i don't have a use case for them i don't use rescale output i know some people that do i just don't take that as you will recording tab we're gonna go over there now recording format you're gonna want mp4 here let me let me let me tell y'all something real quick if you are somebody that has a lot of pc crashes and you have a lot of for some reason your power goes out a lot or you live in a place where there's a lot of storms and your power's shutting off or your pc's randomly black screening and you're trying to film if you film in mp4 and that happens your recording is gone no ifs ands or buts about it this is something that I am willing to sacrifice because of the ease in Premiere Pro. I don't have to remix. I don't have to sit there and wait for it to make two separate files. I don't care for it. There are people that do, and I think that's great. If you want to use MKV and have it remix to MP4, that's totally fine. I'm just not one of those people. I like to record something, and the next second later, I like to throw it into Premiere chop it up and get it posted. I like to work fast. So I use MP4. However, a lot of people like to use MKV. MKV is great. You're not going to have a quality loss going from either or. The only thing that you are going to save is the possibility of corruption. Because if you are on MKV in the event that your power shuts off or your PC turns off, your recording is safe. It'll stop exactly where your PC power was killed. It is a recoverable file. With MP4, it is not. I've had this fuck me on two different occasions in my entire 10 year span of making videos. So take that as you will. Video encoder, H.264 once again. If you have a 50 series card, use that AV1 or um, H.265 quality is better. Compression, not as much. AV1 is beautiful. I've heard Premiere has issues with AV1, but don't quote me. I don't use it, so I don't know. Audio encoder, FMMPEG AAC. That's kind of your stock one. I don't really fuck with that one a lot. Rescale output, I also set to disabled. Your rate control is going to be constant QP. QP level 16. This is going to be as close to lossless as you can be without like extreme performance issues. Again, I'm only basing my settings off of my hardware. If you have a 5090 and a fucking Threadripper, go insane. 
drop that motherfucker down, go on the highest preset for quality, tune everything to the max. Why not? You can afford to. Preset P5. Like I said, we're going slow, good quality, tuning, high quality, multi-mode, single pass, profile main, and then adaptive quantization and look ahead off. You could turn on adaptive quantization. I don't because I have a 3080. It's just kind of rolling with the times. There's better hardware. Games are a little more intense to run. I also have zero B frames. So those are my recording settings. If you guys are curious, if you're not, you've probably clicked off the video already. Regardless, I appreciate you anyway. Uh, enabling replay buffer is also extremely important, guys. Uh, this is something that I use a lot when I'm playing games or streaming. You want to capture these moments. These are why we... It's why we play the game. I mean, we play the game to make the video to entertain people, right? So you don't want to miss those moments. Using replay buffer allows you to miss them less. You're going to miss moments, but if you have replay buffer on, uh, your chances go down significantly. For me, I have replay buffer set to 60 seconds so that I'm over filming rather than under filming. Because if you're in this industry, you're going to want to overshoot all the time. Overshoot. You can delete footage. You can't recover footage that you didn't shoot because you didn't fucking shoot it. So I always like to overshoot. I do 60 seconds. I know people that do 15 seconds. I know people that do 45 seconds. It doesn't really matter. You kind of can set your preferred timing and then maximum memory. I just keep it 520. I don't really notice anything. If you raise it or decrease it, decreasing it, you're probably going to have an issue, but uh, keeping it as default, I've noticed zero quality um, issues or problems. So guys, um, have any questions about the software? It's new to me too. I've been using it for the day and I, I, I like it a lot. I'm a really big fan of what they've sort of thrown in here as a package deal, but I am going to keep playing with it and learning and, you know, toying around with the software and going from there. But guys, that's all I have. I, I think Adam did a great job with this one the same way I thought they did a great job with the multi-streaming tool. They're going to continue to get better. And it's an exciting time if you're a content creator and you like tools that make things easier and better. That's all I have. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on that bell for notifications. Conversate with each other down below in the comments. If you guys have issues with your, your setup or the settings or something, let me know. I'll try my best to help you out. I respond to comments very quickly, actually. Like I said, hope you guys enjoyed. Happy streaming.